Today I want to talk to you about a particularly interesting human behavior, uh, deliberate disposal of the dead. Or more precisely, I want to talk about if this behavior is truly exclusive to humans or whether the newly discovered fossil human ancestor, Homo naledi, likewise deliberately disposed of their dead. Deliberate body disposal is, um, it's been referred to as a hallmark of humanity. Although it varies widely by groupings, it is nonetheless a cultural universal for humans. It's a product of our hyper-social nature. More so than any other animal we know of, humans develop powerful social bonds. These social bonds were likely crucial for the survival of our lineage. We don't have fighting teeth or fighting claws to defend ourselves. Um, the only thing that we can rely on for survival in a difficult and dangerous environment is each other. And these powerful social bonds drive our funerary practices. So we're obviously quite interested in detecting any potential funerary practices in a non-human species of animal. Um, since no other animal we know of engages, no other living animal we know of engages in these complex behavioral uh, practices, uh, we have to recognize that archaeologically speaking, we do have things like Neanderthals and their ancestors that did occasionally engage in this kind of behavior, deliberate disposal of the dead. But Neanderthals, these kind of hominins, and hominin is a term that we use to refer to humans and our immediate fossil relatives, they had brains about the size of modern humans. So we actually even know that Neanderthals interbred with humans. So it's a human-like behavior, deliberate disposal of the dead, in a very close to human relative. But apart from humans and Neanderthals, is there any evidence that any other kind of animal deliberately disposes of their dead? I'm fortunate that I work with a large international collaborative research team in the World Heritage Area in Gauteng Province in South Africa. This area just to the northwest of Johannesburg is riddled with caves and represents one of the richest hominin fossil repositories on Earth. And it was in this area that we encountered a cave system called Rising Star. And in this Rising Star system, we discovered a deep, dark chamber that we named Dinaledi. And in this deep, dark chamber, we found a treasure trove of more than 1,800, so far, fossils representing at least 15 individual skeletons, so far, of a new type of human ancestor that we named Homo naledi. Now, to answer the question that I asked at the beginning, our team contends that Homo naledi did, in fact, deliberately dispose of their dead in the Dinaledi chamber of the Rising Star Cave system. And if we are correct, this would seriously challenge some of the underpinnings of our own human nature, what it means to be human, what sets us as humans apart from the rest of the animal world. Homo naledi itself represents a curious mixture of very primitive ape-like features alongside very advanced human-like features throughout the entire skeleton. Without going into too much detail, overall body size and shape in Homo naledi overlaps with living humans, small body populations, but living humans nonetheless. But with a brain size of about 550 cubic centimeters, it is less than half the brain size of a living human today. Now this raises some intriguing questions. Could something with such a small brain have conceived of their own mortality, possibly envisioned themselves as somehow apart from the natural world? Could they have had the intellectual wherewithal to seek out and find the Dinaledi chamber and then systematically use it to dispose of their dead? Accessing the Dinaledi chamber itself is extremely difficult. Uh, the access route is a long, winding path, very narrow, very difficult to access. It's about 100 feet, or sorry, 100, yeah, 100 yards long, through tiny little squeezes that ultimately, and, and this is all in complete darkness, it ultimately dead ends in the pitch black Dinaledi chamber. Now the first part, you can actually walk through this first bit. It's not easy, but you can do it until you reach what the cavers who first got into the system refer to as the Superman's crawl, which is about a 10-inch high squeeze that requires belly crawling through. And 
As you do it, you might look like Superman flying. Uh, the cavers use some often whimsical names for these things. Eventually, after that, you finally encounter a large rocky structure called the Dragon's Back, so named for a series of rocky projections that look like what the spines of a dragon's back might look like. This is a 40-foot climb to the top before you finally reach the actual access point to the Dinaletti Chamber, which is a 50-foot deep, very narrow fissure called the chute. Now, it's a couple of yards from side to side, but at its narrowest is no more than eight inches wide. So it's extraordinarily difficult to get into, as you can see from this image of one of our excavators squeezing her way down into this extraordinarily difficult to access chamber. This is the only way in, the only way out, the only way we have ever found. And it's important to note the chute has always been this difficult to get through since the chamber formed. So it's always been this hard. Now, as interesting as the hominins that we find there are, of equal importance for our question is what we do not find in the Dinaletti chamber. Every other fossil cave in South Africa, we find the remains of countless other animals like antelope and zebras, and warthogs and baboons. Hominins, our relatives, tend to be among the rarest of the rare. Dinaletti is unique in that we find one type and one type only of animal there. That's Homo naledi. There's nothing else but Homo naledi. That demands explanation. How did these things get there? And again, our interpretation is this represents systematic, deliberate disposal of the dead in the Dinaletti chamber. Now, before we can accept this hypothesis or support it, we do have to or rule out a number of other potential explanations for how they got there. Uh, could they have occupied the chamber and simply died where they lived? Well, we don't find any remains of things like stone tools, no remains of meals, no cultural debris at all. In addition, it is in pitch blackness, utter darkness, so it would have to have had some form of artificial light, fire. But we find no evidence of hearths, no indication of burning, and in fact, in that enclosed setting, oxygen depleted setting, lighting a fire is ill-advised, so occupation is very unlikely. Could they have been moved in through water action, periodic flooding washing material in? We can tell from the geology of the chamber that water has never flowed through the Dinaletti chamber, so it has never been able to get in there. The dragon's back formation has effectively blocked any water from ever getting into that chamber. So there's no evidence for water movement in the chamber, the soils that the bones actually come out of are eroded from the walls and the roof of the chamber itself. Uh, in addition, if there were water moving bones in, we would also expect to see the bones of other animals. And remember, we don't find them. Could they have been dragged in by carnivores like leopards or hyenas the way they are in virtually every other fossil cave in South Africa? Well, we don't find any indication of carnivore activity. There's no tooth marks, no punctures, no crushing, no damage on any of the bones in the cave. Carnivores would also not be able to climb that very difficult 40-foot climb up the dragon's back and then 50 feet down through the chute and into the chamber and then back up and out again because remember, we don't find carnivores in there. So they would have, if they got in, they would have to get out. But there's no evidence for them. In addition, if carnivores are bringing in carcasses, we would expect to see other animals apart from just Homo naledi, but we don't find them. All we find is Homo naledi. So there's no reason to implicate carnivores. So could it be an accidental death situation? Could they have climbed into the chamber maybe to escape bad weather, or dangerous predators, looking for some kind of rare resource? For some reason, they could not get back out. Well, the geology of the cave indicates that they arrived in multiple depositional episodes. That means they didn't get there at the same time. They got there many years apart, which means Homo naledi would have had to crawl into this cave and accidentally die over and over again for generations, an explanation that becomes increasingly unlikely. So that brings us back to deliberate disposal. What other evidence supports this notion? And again, it's worth stressing here. The only thing we find in this chamber is Homo naledi. Combine that with the extreme difficulty getting into the chamber. 
suggest to us this is the most unique depositional setting in all of South Africa. And our interpretation is that this depositional setting is the equivalent of a cemetery. Now, when we look at the Homo naledi skeletons, we see there is an overabundance of very young and very old individuals, which is something we all see, also see in human cemetery populations. The very young and the very old are the most vulnerable members of a group. They're the most likely to die. And we are seeing that reflected at Dinaledi. We have almost every bone in the body represented, from tiny little ear ossicles to skulls to jaws, teeth, complete hands, complete feet. This means they got in there most likely as articulated units, not in bits and pieces as they would be if they were washed in or dragged in by carnivores. There's also very little morphological variability. They all look very similar to each other. This is different from what we see in other hominin species, where fossil specimens are separated from each other by hundreds of miles and sometimes hundreds of thousands of years, and so they tend to not look identical to each other. Homo naledi, looking as similar as they all do, makes sense if this is the equivalent of a single Homo naledi group, putting the dead members of their group in this chamber over generations. They all look alike. They all look so similar to each other because they're all related to each other. Now, some of our colleagues have challenged our interpretations of deliberate disposal. Uh, some have suggested there must have been an easier access to the chamber in the past. Well, geologically speaking, we don't find another entry into the chamber. Had there been one, we would also expect to see a few things. If it were easier to get in somehow in the past, we would expect to see sediment washed in from outside, and it doesn't exist there. We would expect to see bones of other animals, because if it's easier to get in, other animals would have gotten in, but we don't find them. So there's no geological evidence that another entrance ever existed. Others have suggested that really they're just getting rid of rotting, smelly corpses, which is a sensible move, but there are any number of ways of doing that without risking life and limb to get to the Dinaletti chamber. You simply walk away and leave them. Let the scavengers have them. Roll them into a river. Dump them anywhere else in the rising star system. Anything but drag them into the dark bowels of this horrible Dinaletti chamber. Some have even gone so far as to suggest Homo naledi were murdered by humans who then hid the evidence of their crime by stuffing their bodies down into the Dinaledi chamber. I hear this one a lot. Every time I hear this one, I'm thinking to myself, this is telling me more about you than it is about <laughs> Homo naledi. Now, setting aside the question of why murder and hide Homo naledi for generations in the same place, there actually is no indication of Homo sapiens on the scene. Only Homo naledi. In fact, the Dinaledi chamber predates the earliest appearance of Homo sapiens anywhere in Africa. So that argument also doesn't hold up. The fact remains, the most parsimonious explanation is that Homo naledi were using the Dinaledi chamber of the Rising Star Cave system to systematically dispose of their dead. They did so probably along the following lines. A member of their group dies. They, survivors, take that member into the Dinaledi, or sorry, into the Rising Star Cave system. They would have needed some form of artificial light because it's absolute darkness. Fire, presumably, though again, we don't find any evidence of it, but maybe. They would have dragged the body through that Superman's crawl, which in the past was likely more open and easy to access, but then they get to the dragon's back, which has always been that difficult to get up. They would have to drag the body 40 feet up to the top of this thing and then either carry it 50 feet down into the chamber or we think more likely just push it over the edge into the chute and down into the beyond, whatever they perceived it to mean. That's probably the more likely explanation. They did this over generations despite the fact they all had a brain less than half the size of a living human even though it's in the body, about the size of some living humans. So we are fortunate that after all this time, we are only now just picking up the traces of Homo naledi. Now, an equally compelling thought to me, apart from how fascinating that body disposal is, somebody of Homo naledi that is, had to be the first one to find the Dinaledi chamber. Somebody of Homo naledi 
with a brain the size of a large orange, explored the rising star system looking for what? We'll never know. But the fact remains, we have behavior that is otherwise only encountered in large brain things like humans and Neanderthals. We have just scratched the surface of the Dinaletti chamber, literally in our excavations. And excavation throughout the rising star cave system are ongoing. Every piece of Homo naledi that we pull out of this cave system highlights the powerful social bonds that are driving this behavior. And it's forcing us to recognize that what we once thought was a behavior exclusive to humans might not be so unique to us after all. And that this particular absolutely characteristic portion of our human nature might be shared with an animal that was not human. Thank you very much for your time.